Hi, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your story, The Rocking Horse Winner. Hopefully by now you've already read or read the story um, in your book or the e-text that I provided and you've watched the video on detecting themes. And as uh, you watched and even read in chapter 19, the theme uh, comes from many different observations we make uh, about a particular work. And when we look at uh, a story, we always want to look at a little bit about the author. Uh, that will provide some insight into maybe some uh, common themes that, that a writer likes to uh, write about and anything else that may have been going on in his life or her life that affects our understanding of the story. We see this, is, this particular story is a short story by the author D.H. Lawrence. Uh, short for David Herbert Lawrence, but that's his writing name, and lived around the turn of the century, 1885 to 1930. He is from England. Uh, he grew up, so we say I'm going to use this little study guide that's in your, your uh, course site as a way of kind of talking about it. And he grew up in the village of Nottinghamshire as a miner's son. So his dad was a coal miner. His mom was a school teacher. His dad uh, drank a lot. He just didn't really relate to him at all. And um, he related more to his mom who was educated and that's what he wanted to be. And so um, he went through a series of, <clears throat> of uh, jobs and things to be able to go to school. So that is a background that uh, influences a lot of his writing. And if you reading The Rocking Horse Winter. The, uh, the breakdown of the family relationships are very significant here. You know, you have the son Paul who is not being guided very well by either of his parents. The father in that story is pretty absent. Uh, the mother is present but she's emotionally very distant. You know, it says that she really doesn't truly love her children. So it's not an autobiography which means it's not uh, D.H. Lawrence telling his life story, but certainly the dysfunction of his own home influence, influenced uh, the family relationships that are in his stories. Um, he moved around because of tuberculosis and, and so forth, and he and his wife, they just lived all over the world. Uh, somewhere in there, we're not sure why, he kind of went edgy. Uh, what, well, it wouldn't be considered edgy today. But it was at the time because he had a lot of, in his novels, explicit depictions of male-female relationships. Um, basically a lot of the sexual overtones in a way that was not acceptable in society at, at the time. So some of his books uh, were banned. Um, how, you know, not this short story because any of the, uh, you don't find any overt sexuality in it. There are some, sometimes people read things into it because they are aware of D.H. Lawrence and kind of his... Uh, view on things, so they read read into that. But there's not anything overt. It was not a banned story. He is interested, though, in this uh, conflict between the mind and logic and reason versus emotion and intuition, which was a common kind of uh, idea in the late 1800s, and it started even in the early 1800s with writers like Herman Vel Melville and uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne, who were reacting against. Uh, the age of reasoning in the 1700s. So that that conflict is something that he was very interested in. So he didn't make much money from his books but he was recognized later as being a, a very good writer, excellent writer. Okay, the first, next thing we see on here is the emphasis on theme and that is really our emphasis. We're going to mention, talk about conflicts and characters a little bit um, today and should look at different material and your questions but the emphasis is going to be on, uh, on theme and it reminds us here what theme is so I'm not going to redo that bit since you've already had a video but that's there for you to kind of remember and they start with a little bit of a prompter because one of the obvious themes if you've read you're supposed to have read the story by now um, is about money and whether it buys happiness and uh, you know and if you get your priorities wrong about that you know what can happen they have a little chart here. If you haven't read the story, it'd be good. Or before you write your paper, and if you choose to write the theme essay on this story, you want to focus on some of the things that are happening to the key characters. And uh, the key characters are Paul, his mother, and his uncle Oscar. So that's the sort of three major characters and how they relate to one another, and um, and how they, you know, kind of 
what they say about this or what they believe about you know money. Um, we'll skip the vocab part and let's take a look at the story. I'm not going to go through and read all this. You're supposed to do that yourself. I'm just going to highlight a few things to help you understand uh, the emphasis and what I'm looking for when what uh, when I'm um, looking for you to write a paper and answer questions. The background, you have a similar background in your textbook on page 481. Um, it talks about horse racing in England and how long ago that is and the different types of races, cross-country races are called the steeplechases. Um, this story mentions the Derby and in this uh, the rocking horse winner you have someone who uh, a character who is betting you know on races to make money through luck now this story is very unique it mentions this on 481 it has the elements of a fairy tale and you see that here in the beginning it almost says that once upon a time uh, start you know once upon a time there was a woman who was beautiful who had all the advantages and she had beautiful children and they have a lovely home and and it has that generic you know you don't even know their names for a while uh, once upon a time you know kind of feel it's a fairy tale but it's also got some elements of what's called a gothic tale and a gothic tale is going to be uh, kind of creepy someone's going to die uh, you think Edgar Allan Poe, you know, when you think Gothic tale, there's going to be a haunted house. And so we have that. We have a house that on the outside, you know, is desirable and looks good. and um, But inside there's anxiety and the house actually whispers. And um, so there's this haunting in there. And it's similar with the woman, the mother. Outwardly, everybody thinks that she's a great mom. But inwardly, she just doesn't have any compassion. At the center of her heart is a hard little place. She doesn't feel love for anybody. Now, she had married for love, but says the love had turned to dust. So that's a good commentary for her marital, marital relationship, which is empty. And uh, this idea that, you know, there's revelation, rather, that she doesn't really truly love her children. But she's going through the motions and appearing to. So there's a lot of appearance versus reality. That's a conventional theme. If you remember that from Chapter 1, uh, a conventional theme in stories, how things appear are not how things really are. So that's a theme that can be discussed. Um, but this is the type of genre we call this. So we look for those features. It has recognizable features of a fairy tale, but combined with a gothic tale which gives us a very different. It's not going to have a happily ever after fairy tale ending at all. It's going to have that gothic tale dark sad ending. And you get very early on that things are not right. Uh, there's anxiety in the house. There's never enough money. We kind of relate to that. Um, but there's this um, you know lack of love. Okay sometimes you can you know substitute well we don't have money but we have love. Well that's not there you know either. And then it says it's haunted. So on top of having a mother who doesn't love you, a father who can't provide for you, and all this stress, you have a haunted house. So very quickly, you realize that this is not a place we would choose to want to grow up in. Um, the haunted phrase is, there must be more money, there must be more money. So even though they get expensive toys, uh, there's this anxiety and they look into each other's eyes. There's a lot of references to eyes and think about that. That's the window of the soul, right? Where things are real and they, they so when they don't say things, they hear things and they see each other, see it in each other's eyes, the truth. Um, the horse itself becomes involved in the whispering um, and then all of a sudden the horse gets animated. So we have some kind of supernatural elements. A house doesn't literally whisper, you know, so we know this is fiction and it's got this supernatural element. And the horse is starting to behave as if it were alive, bending his wooden champing head. He heard it too. Uh, even though it came from the springs of the horse, he could hear it. And the doll is smirking and she can hear it. And the puppy that took the place of the teddy bear, he can hear it, but nobody ever said it out loud. And then we get our first kind of conversation between Paul and the mom. And he's asking about luck and about mon money and why they're, they're poor compared to their uncle Oscar. And uh, the mom just equates lack of money with no luck. Because she has everything going for her that's supposed to give you money. You know, she's got good looks. He's got good looks. They come from good families. Why, you know, they are educated. They had jobs, but they're not making money. So she just puts it on luck, and they don't have it. 
and she can't really explain why uh, to him and they do mention God here maybe God knows but he never tells and there's some loose occasional references to God and they show up right here so some people discuss this in terms of religious theme and that would be the subject you would have to discern what is it saying about religion if God uh, never tells who's lucky and who isn't but he but the boy says he tells me and is luck from God or you know from something else and so uh, that's a theme that some people explore what are the, the religious themes in in this story not as obvious as the one about money and luck and materialism and love uh, those are those are subjects that you could explore and determine what you think the message of the author is about those different subjects and that message would be then your theme um, he decides that he's lucky because God told him he was lucky of course she laughs she mocks him um, not really believing him so obviously she doesn't believe in God but him him and his innocence he does so he uh, his link to that is he focuses on the rocking horse and of course our 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 title is a clue that we have um, let me check so the title is a, a clue that the rocking horse is significant but it's not the rocking horse it's the rocking horse winner so we have to see who's going to be the winner and so we go through this where he's riding the horse and the nurse he is a nurse notice these are not poor people they think they're poor but they're not and uh, that means they have uh, basically we call it a nanny today and uh, he's riding and he's riding and finally uh, Uncle Oscar and mom comes in on this and he says are you riding a winner and uh, the kind of mock she kind of mocks him for his age so he's too big for you know playing on that horse but he is really determined and uh, Uncle Oscar kind of um, uh, encourages him and this is something about the names and the names are significant in this story said he has different names he was called San Savino last week and Oscar recognizes that name uh, he's sophisticated and worldly and he recognizes that that's a name of the horse that won a recent race and uh, she mom even knows he talks about Paul talks about horse races with the gardener Bassett and so he finds out a little bit more so he he's inquisitive uh, Oscar is and finds out that they're placing bets bets on uh, the horses and he is truly a winner and so he asks him about it um, I don't want to summarize the whole story there's it goes through a series of betting on the horses and the child actually riding the horse and magically supernaturally the horse winner's name is revealed and so uh, he wins and he Oscar gets in on it and says well, you know what are you going to do with your money well I started it for mom because she said she had no luck and because father <coughs> excuse me is unlucky and I'm trying to stop that whispering in the house so he has stepped into a role that's not really appropriate for him he's too young to be carrying the weight of trying to solve the problem in the house uh, the problem of lack of money the problem that dad can't provide the problem that mom has because she feels she's unlucky and the anxiety in the house the haunting of the house but the child even though he's innocent is trying to step up and take that uh, that role and uh, that's something that's been explored too in the theme but the inappropriateness of of a child having to bear that adult responsibility and the uh, consequences of that unfortunately Uncle Oscar who should know better and should step up as an adult and intervene does not he just continues to allow the boy to to do this and basically exploits the child for his own gain so he is uses the child as well to make money because um, whatever it is it's working and so they plan to give mom the money I uh, give some little advice about that and even though you know things change um, it doesn't really solve the problem now we get a little interesting little thing here about her having the knack of sketching furs which she would like to wear and she gets a job she also steps into a traditionally male role especially in the 1800s early 1900s because she's but again she's dissatisfied she wanted to be first in something um, so it's never quite enough even though she she makes some extra money and it, we find out when Paul gives her a, a large sum of money for her birthday um, 
that doesn't make her happy either. She gets the whole 5,000 pounds, a lot of money, uh, then